My brother, when we talk about hope, are you with me? Hello? Are you with me here? Then we see that my soul will be addressed by my spirit. Remember we said, you are a spirit, you have a soul, you live in a body. True? When you die, it's just you're going through and you receive the best, best, best body. Are you with me? When in Adam and Eve we ate from the tree, God said, you will surely die. And immediately death came in their spirit and its body, soul. And so me and you, we can have all the good works, we can all have all the nice works, but unless you are not born again, you cannot enter the kingdom of God. So, at the end of the day, that is my spirit that is in a state of death. Even you find a guy out there, his soul can be very holy. But by God's grace, let's thank God for his grace over our lives, that somebody gave us the truth, so that at the end of the day, the rebirth of my spirit came in. Amen. And then, 2 Corinthians 5, what do we always say? Everything became new. We are a new creation. Amen? And as a new creation, my spirit is perfect. 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 But my spirit is immature. My soul can be demanding. My soul, my emotions, my intellect, my will can have a lot to say in this body. But now, God says, now your body is not the body for your soul, for your personality, for your emotions, your intellect, your will, just to let it happen. Soul cannot control your body anymore because your body doesn't belong to you now. Your body is now the temple of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will speak in your spirit, your perfect spirit. And from that place, call your soul in line, mind to be renewed, Feelings to be, to be healed, to become wholesome. And so that my body will walk out the mandate that God placed in my spirit. Are we with one another still? So if you see three guys coming up, the one represents spirit. That's not the spirit of God. That is your spirit that make you a human being instead of a baboon. Because you receive spirit when God breathed in you that is why you're a human being you can find a chimpanzee he can look much more clever than some human beings but that doesn't make him a human being and that guy a baboon so we cannot come from baboon because god said let there be baboon and baboon was there but with man he put his spirit in man amen that's why man wants to worship something even out there somewhere there in the bush long ago he put the he worshiped the sun or he worshiped the the tree or he worshiped something because something here inside is calling out to spirit and that is his own spirit in a state of death okay so holy spirit will speak into your spirit. So at this stage, a body or spirit, can, are you going to have an entrance or you, or, uh, no, I must just explain who you are. Okay, so let's just, um, yeah, just uh, somewhere nearly there. Okay, yeah, yeah. So John Dean, the tallest one, he's uh, playing the role of your spirit. Playing the role of your spirit, reborn. Holy Spirit is speaking into him, and he must call Saul, that's Niku, the one in the middle, he must call Saul in line. I'm being demoted. Okay. Fired. Saul. So Mr. Saul must come in line. That's your, say again, will, emotions, and intellect. Okay? And body must walk it out. So this is the inner dynamics of me and you. Inner dynamics of me and you. So, 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 uh, just quickly come here. Let me just, because they're going to do three or four times. We must get, give them something to do so that they can focus. Amen. Okay. So, 
Hello? The word of God says, when you became reborn, spirit is reborn, then suddenly the word of God is two-edged sword, hey? And the first thing, he can divide, he can cut between what is soul and what is spirit. For the first time, you can identify what God has placed in your spirit because the word says we have the mind of Christ. Where? He has the mind in soul. Mind is here. He has the mind. In soul. But you have the mind of Christ. Where? In your spirit. You have God's mind in your spirit. You have your mind in your soul. Hello? Amplified says you have the mind of Christ and you do hold the thoughts, the feelings, the purposes of God. Where? In your spirit. So if soul is in tantrum with opinions or with issues with somebody or this or that, or you don't feel inferior or superior or this, there can be a hell of a lot of war happening in soul. But at the end of the day, if soul, your mind must be renewed. How? Through the word of God. Through the word of God. May the Holy Spirit give testimony in my spirit. First of all, crying out, Abba. Papa, I'm a child of God. Hello? Sorry, guys. Yeah. Are you with me? So there's some dynamics, some things that need to change. Because at the end of the day, my brother, my sister, the hope of glory, Jesus Christ, is in your spirit. So the fullness of hope, the, mo the totality of hope is living in you. Where? In your spirit. So you can lose hope. I lost my hope. They were in your soul. So feel he has no hope. Your soul feels. But this is not right. That is not right. What the devil is waiting for you to say, I have no hope. Great. As long as soul can tell such a lie. Because that's a lot of rubbish. Because you have hope. He's alive and living in you, in your spirit. But if the enemy can deceive you so that you will say when you are going through a tantrum or going through depression or going through negativity or whatever, that you say, I have no hope. I have no hope. But is it not Christ, the eternal hope living in your spirit? How can you say that? Truth, the hope is in you, Jesus Christ, in your spirit. The facts, you feel you have no hope. And you can say, I feel hopeless. I feel this. I feel that. Because you acknowledge you're honest about some facts. But the truth, you will never, ever, 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 ever lose hope unless God leaves you and he will forsake you. And God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. That means hope will never leave you. Hope will never forsake you. Amen. They say that hope will never leave me. Hope will never forsake me. So give him a hand. It's over to you guys. You know, we're not actually allowed to skate in church. Skate in but, church? But let's what? give it... No, 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 no. Just, so just think. Yeah, yeah, I hear what you're saying, Spirit, but let's give it a clap.
Sorry, bro. Listen, please. So, uh, I want to tell you the story. Do you know that life is many times like skateboarding? You know, we get on skateboards every single day in our emotions, in our circumstances, in our situations, and we get on that skateboard. Yeah, but you know what? The skateboard we have is not right. I told you, you can't buy the cheap one. It's not if you buy cheap, you buy twice. Now we're falling. So, if you don't get this twice, so, buddy, it's not physically that you can go. It's in your situation, every your ordinary life, so. You are going to encounter these things. You're going to encounter emotions and feelings and situations. And then you know what? You sometimes it's risky. And you're going to have to get on the skateboard. I need to take a risk, yeah. Mm. yeah dude. You want us to take a risk? Did no. you see what happened? No, no, when no. You, yeah, when he tried to go off the stage, no, I he that. almost broke this half of his. We just don't know to take a risk. I want to say so that. We don't take a risk and it's going to end bad because we have the Holy Spirit. That is our train of thought. And He guides us steadily. But that's easy to say. That's not how I feel. Every time we try, we fail. It's easy to say the Holy Spirit is not, is not trained out. But when we physically try, the body does it. I think He should be trained. I think you should do a bit more on your side. You look like Johnny Hopkins. No, no, no. Not at all. Oh, okay. That's the job. Why do you always put this on me? So, uh, let's, let's read this first. Tell body to read Psalm 42 verses. Wait, out, of, out of the Bible. Yes, out of the Bible. Do we have a Bible. We have a Bible. Okay, one like that. When was it? Five years ago? Yes, sir. No, That's all right. You can sit on the shelf somewhere. Get, oh, yeah. Yeah, it is. Under the, under the uh, table. That there, the dust is there. Why is there a towel in ice stuff? Just, just, <laughs> maybe, uh, just take okay. some dust off. Psalm 42. We should try to read this book a bit more, eh? Psalm 42. Where's that? The, the back. <laughs> Revelations. <laughs> dragons. Oh, you want us to read about dragons? Old Testament. Old Testament. Old Testament. Where's that? Like in the middle of the Old Testament, after Job. In the, oh, that in the it's middle it's of the Psalms, yes. It's like a book with like a hundred and some ah. chapters. Psalm so, 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 so. 42, verse 11. 42, verse 11. Yes. What does it say? Uh, why are you cast down, O oh my soul? And why are you disquiet within me? Hope in God. What? Oh, yes. Did you read that with your own eyes? Yes. <laughs> you told you I can see. Did you not hit your head when you fell down? I can see. It it's says I was. It says so. Our spirit that was he preaching to me the whole time. He's actually allowed to preach to me. It's not about preaching, soul. I don't want to preach to you. I don't want to do these things just because I like you. It's about me wanting to help you because I hear what the Holy Spirit says, and I don't want us. <laughs> To be stuck in this thing the whole time when we feel the pressure, you feel like you have. But it, it, it says, it says there that I should put my hope in the Lord and not be downcast. Yes. But I feel downcast. I feel that when we try, we fail again and again and again and again. So, body, we're gonna Every have time we try. Spirit. We're gonna have to work together now. If we want to put our hope in the Lord, it's not gonna work if one of us do. All of us has to do this. So can we try and put our hope in the Lord? What's, what's I do? Well, if that scripture says it, then it's probably in two. What of us? It is well with my soul. No, no. That's not how I feel. I don't feel like it's well. How can you say that? <laughs> it says it here. No, so we have to see it quite. It doesn't mean that when I get on the schedule, that everything is always going to be fine. So everything is not always going to be fine, but we do it with the Holy Spirit. We step out in faith. We sing it in faith. Even though you don't feel it, we sing it in faith. Okay. Okay. So maybe just read the scripture one more time. Okay. And listen. Let's, let's, let's read it one more time. Why are you down? Oh my soul, and why are you despite within me? Hope in God. Okay, okay. So the word says it. Spirit, I hear what you say. I don't always feel like it. I don't always want to. Yes. 
Sometimes I really feel like I don't want to take a chance again. I don't want to get hurt again. But we can do this. Let's put our hope in the Lord. Soul, bless the Lord, oh my soul. Oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before. Oh my soul. We worship I hear what you're saying. I think, let's get that skateboard and let's go try again another day. Yeah. We can do this. Let's put our... Yo. Yo, let's do this. We can get the skateboard. Okay, great. You can come and stand here. Top again. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, I hope you can see, and I believe, I trust, that you will see the dynamics. Okay. Here we come, buddy, to the side again. Was you the Where's the camera? Where's the camera? So my brother, many times we sing the songs, but you will find in the Psalms, David, many times he will say, God, I'm going through this, I'm going through this, and then it is Saul giving the facts, giving the facts of the situation. Saul giving the fact, I'm going through this, and I'm going through that, I'm going through that. But then he says, and Spirit says, but my hope is in the Lord. Put your finger out there. There's, there's the facts. You see a lot of facts and you experience a lot of things. But, and then the last verse of that whole psalm of after all this major intense stuff that he listed in that psalm. He says, but my hope is in the Lord. I will wait on him. Are you with me? Right, because in my body I feel this and I feel that and I feel that and I feel that. In my circumstances I experience that and I experience that. And I feel in my soul this and this and this. But I submit to what my spirit is saying. I will trust the Lord. I will hope in God and in God alone. Are you, are you with me? If we understand this dynamic, my brother and my sister, A, we can see worship in what? In spirit and truth. Father is looking. Father is looking for those who will worship Him, not just, just raise the hand, not just from the soul, but from, from here. Now, Spirit wants to know, Spirit always wants to worship. Your Spirit always wants to have intimacy with Holy Spirit and with God. So, and Holy Spirit is so ready to bring the, the awesomeness in your Spirit, to bring it as a worship to the Father. Hello? But if this one says no, it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. So your body, your physical body, you're not going to raise your hand. You're not going to raise your hand. When we sing, I lift my hands. So this is what from your spirit really, God, I, I want to lift my hands. But Saul says, you are tired. I'm tired. I've heard this song a few times before. And so we're not going to lift our hands. So soul will, will make sure that there's no worship in spirit and according to the truth, the word of God. But if the word of God, the truth, brings the renewing of the mind, renewing of the mind. Hello? And soul is being renewed. Then from what is here, and the mind is articulation with the word of God so that body will express and lift his hand. And soul will agree in that sense. And when there's unity, I can move forward. I can move forward with that what God has for my life. But if in worship, there's conflict in body, soul, spirit, in your life, in my life, when you must get out to the word of God, when you must worship God and praise him, and there's conflict and there's constant conflict in your being how on earth must you get into what god has for your life how on earth must you get into that place because soul say no nobody will force me spirit you cannot tell me what to do now who will tell you so what to do it's either the devil or your flesh or god 
through your spirit that will speak. Now, you've received that piece of paper. You know, you have it in front of you. Now, it says, we're going to do a few of those, but it says, what does it say? Dear, dear, and then from. Now, this is not for your future husband or your future wife by faith. It's not, not something like that now. Okay. So what you're going to write there is dear soul. Right there, soul. S-O-U-L. Soul. Seal. Dear soul. I say. And then you can write there from spirit. Write there spirit with a small letter. It's not the Holy Spirit, but from your spirit. Now we're going to take five minutes, and I want you really to ask Holy Spirit to help you. Now you find that in scriptures, like it was said, where your spirit will speak to your soul and say, Soul, why are you so downcast? Hope on God. Him you will still praise. And when it is said, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Who is singing that? Your spirit is singing it to your soul. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Oh, my soul. My emotions, my intellect, my will, my everything, my personality. Worship His. No, you. Worship His holy name. So if I'm spirit, donkey. If I'm spirit, (laughs) I say, Bless the Lord, oh my soul. That's you. Still you. This is all in you. You, as your spirit, telling your soul. Oh, my soul, worship his holy name. Are you with me? So, there's other song. Oh, my soul, you are not alone. You know, a lot of these songs, when you hear the word, oh, my soul, or bless the Lord, oh, my soul. It is actually you addressing your soul to come in line. Now, I want you to write down, even if you write a little bit of these scriptures down, but write down what do you believe are you supposed to tell your soul tonight? Soul that is maybe downcast, irritated, frustrated, negative, pessimistic, or soul that is just having one thing in mind, I'm tired. My body tells me I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired. So I'm not open. I cannot receive from God. I cannot receive from my own spirit that's very alive. That's very hungry for God. That's very sensitive for the Holy Spirit. I cannot. I cannot. I cannot. Just do that. Because there's one message I receive as soul. And that is, I'm tired. My body says, I'm tired. And if my body says, I'm tired, I will not receive anything. From my spirit, I will not receive what Holy Spirit is doing in my spirit. I will not. And all the devils in hell says, Amen. So my brother, your soul can be a real bully. Can be a real manipulating factor in your life. Are you with me? Because in an animal, you can go. Now there's animal. They don't look like animal. They're not animal. but (laughs) Animal. If Saul says, you will not move, but he will not move. If Saul says, I feel to do this, he will do that. Whatever the animal wants to do, he will do. I want to sit, and I sit. I'm not going to go with, I'm not going to go with. I'm going to lie, I'm going to lie. Whatever soul will tell this body, this curse, this curse will be there for the man going to hell. This dynamic, this man Eternal hell. But if you cannot enter the kingdom of God, but if you become reborn, become a child of God, hallelujah, God has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. And so you better fall in line. And so that body, you will come in front of your body and you will walk out what God has placed in, the spirit, in his spirit. Okay, thank you. Give them a hand. All right. So I'm going to give you five minutes. I'm going to give you five minutes. And I want you 
And I pray that Holy Spirit will guide you. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you will pray, you will, you will, you will show every man, every woman here what is happening in their spirit. You made their spirit perfect. You bring the rebirth in their spirit. Holy Spirit, you testify in their spirit that they are a child of God. You crying out in their spirit, Abba, Papa, Daddy. You have not given them a spirit of fear, but a spirit of love, power, and a sound mind. You have not given them a spirit of slavery to fear again, but the spirit of sonship. This quality spirit in every man and woman here. I pray that from their quality spirit, they will now speak to their soul with what is happening in their emotions, intellect, personality, and whatever they're going through. Help each one right now that they can write down as you guide them what their own spirit wants to say to their soul. Amen. It's over to you. I give you five minutes.
Hallelujah. I want to challenge you really to to do that more. When we are talking about how much you have hope in your ordinary life, it will walk into the place of tomorrow where we're not going to teach about it tomorrow because you're just going to facilitate prayer. So it's hope in your prayer life, hope in your, hope in your conversations, hope in how you just have a holiday with life as a holiday and how to have hope in your relationships at the end of the day. What will it come down to? What will it come down to, my brother? For the first one, I want to say to you. No, I mustn't start there. Let me not go there. Make things simple. When I don't know how to work with hope, the stress, the anxiety, the pressure of life, the things that must I still I must still do. The, the load that I experience, the thing that I feel, it's all too much, or this is too much, or this. And I'm going through the, all this turmoil because somewhere hope is not established. Because when hope is established, life becomes more simple. Hope in your ordinary life that you can have a simple life, but where you enjoy your life. Life don't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be complicated. Hello? And the more I have hope, the more I understand hope, the more I can be, we call it, content. Contentment. Is it not Paul that said, I've learned how to be content? Philippians 4, hey? Philippians 4, 6. First verse 4, rejoice in the Lord always. Yes, yes, yes. And God is with me. And worry about nothing. Be anxious of nothing. Why? Because in prayer, you're going to bring it before the Lord. With thanksgiving. With thanksgiving. Everybody, thanksgiving. Thanksgiving. And then the peace of God, that surpasses all understanding, will guard your heart and your mind. Your heart and your mind. The peace will be there. Why? You find in yourself in a place of hope. When you have hope, you can have peace. When you have hope, you can have peace. If you can learn what hope is all about, if you can allow hope to speak to you, if you can get a relationship with hope, his name is called Jesus Christ, and you understand that he is your eternal hope. It's not just a theology statement. It's not just a statement to agree with or not to agree with. It's a life that God wants to bring in me. Are you with me? And if you can start to have this relationship with hope, then you understand when in prayer, when you talk about hope in your prayer life, be anxious of nothing, but let everything in prayer be known before the Lord. That's easy to say. God is telling you, don't be anxious. Boom. And that must settle. It's just a command. And if you're anxious, we call it sin. No condemnation for the anxiety. But God says, I must bring myself in line out of the anxiety, out of the stress, out of the, the fears, out of those stuff. And I know each one has a different situation, but I hope you're going with me when I'm talking about this. God can expect of you to deal with the anxiety and the fears because he know he gave you the hope of heaven. His only son, Jesus Christ. And the hope of heaven is living in you. Let's say the hope of heaven is living in me. I will have a relationship with the hope of heaven. Jesus Christ. Amen. Let it be so. Let it be so for you. Let it be so for me in Jesus' name. But then what, what he went, where it's still going on with that whole, all those verses... It comes to verse 10, 11, and 12. And then it's Paul that's saying, I've learned how to be content. I've learned how to be happy in my circumstance. I've learned how to be in the midst of intimidation, in the midst of a lot of stuff. In the midst of major crisis, major intimidation, major tribulation, major 
major things, positive and negative. But in all of that, I've learned how to be content. Why, first of all? Because with contentment, the basis, hope. I have an unfailing hope. I have an unshakable hope in me. Therefore, whatever is shaking around me cannot take my hope away. And in this eternal hope that I have, I'm content. My happiness is coming from this place of hope. Where I know there's an excellent future God has for me. And today he is here with me. And today I can experience eternal life. And that is knowing the one who's called eternal hope. Are you with me? Why? And then he explains why. How, how is it possible that in all your circumstances you can come into this place of happiness where you hope in your holiday, if I can call it like that, that you can have hope in that place of I have fulfillment in my life. Hello? I have fulfillment. How is it possible? For. For. He says, for I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. So don't quote that verse out of context. That verse is in the context of somebody saying that through his circumstances, through everything that he went through, he learned how to be content. He learned how to build a life based on hope and that he, as he's fulfilled. He's not frustrated. He's not frustrated. He's not unfulfilled. He's not unsatisfied. He's fulfilled. In all circumstances, in all circumstances, he's still fulfilled because he has learned it because he knows that I can do this through Christ who strengthens me. Christ, the eternal hope, strengthens me so that I understand how to have happiness in any circumstance, how to be fulfilled, and that is content. There's nothing that can take happiness away from me. Ah, you know that, that, that singer that uh, died now that was on the America's Got Talent? Nightbird. What was that, that uh, awesome saying that she gave? You cannot wait for life not to be hard to be happy. Is it something like that? You cannot wait for life, not to be hard, to be happy. And that was a lady with cancer in right through her everything, and she just arrested everybody, and her testimony is in Christ. She's uh, from a revival church in, in America, and she went there, and she just had this testimony, and she had this prophetic word over her life that she will reach people. And she was doing this as this audition, but the simplicity, authenticity, and everything that just came through, the simpleness of her faith, and how she decided, I'm happy. Here's this lady, she's dying of cancer. She, you can see that, but there's something in her that you can see there's an eternal hope. That she's content. She's happy. And it shocked the people. If I can say like that. And it was like, how many views? How many million? Oh, nobody knows. Anybody with articulation? A few million views. A few million views. With just like in a short, short while. Where in the final night when she couldn't be there because her health deteriorated too much. But the guys, the judges said, you've made your mark, you've won already. Because you had all these millions and millions and millions of views all over the world. You've made an, already an impact. Just with that one audition on America's Got Talent. God gave her those promises, she got this prophetic word over her life. Until the end, her testimony was full out. To live full out. May God help you, may God help me. That we will not first try our prayer life and hope that things will change so that we can have hope. It's not hope that things will change. I hope this prayer will work so that at the end of the day I have hope because the prayer worked. 
I'm trusting God for these things to change so that at the end of the day I can say, I have hope because I can see. No, you start with hope if you believe Christ is your hope. And that from that place you move. Amen. Are you with me? So in that place, when I talk about, if I quickly just mention a few things that we will go deeper in during the, during the camp. Hope in your holiday. Everybody say, hope in your holiday. You know, when some, sometimes it's the, the most suicides in a holiday. In a holiday. When the guy's going through depression intensely. When he's, after I've worked, after the rat race, after I went and I went through and I calmed down and I'm now in that place. Then what is happening with you? Then you evaluate your life. Then you evaluate what happened. Who are you? What did you enjoy? What did you not enjoy? You waited so. You worked so hard for the holiday. Now in the holiday, you sit with yourself still. Hello. And if you don't know how to enjoy yourself, enjoy God, enjoy life with you and the people around you, and you don't have that understanding, then it's not a type of holiday where you find hope. But sometimes in a holiday, some people really get depressed because they can see, I didn't get a breakthrough. I actually, I'm in a race, but I didn't finish the race for 2021. I actually quit on the race. I went for the race and halfway through the year was gone. I just got off the tracks and went and sat there at the side. It's December month. But I haven't finished the race. I don't know where to start next year. I don't know where to start because I'm not where you're supposed to start. <laughs> um, I got off the tracks half, halfway round. Uh, are you with me? So how will I run the race with perseverance and with hope in such a way that I know as I come to the end of this month, at the end of this year, at the end of this week, I've accomplished what God has sent me to do. Amen. Oh, come on. But we will fail in many ways, I know. In the sense that we are not perfect. But through God's grace, I will be able to see. I will be able to see what God had for me, what he has for me, and what is the next step. And praise God, he's a God of restoration. That for that, what I've done right, I can build on it next year. For what I've done wrong, I can learn from it and still build further. So both is, is possible. So my brother, my sister, with that, if you need to understand how must I, how must I come into a place of being content with what I'm going through? How must you not moan and groan? How must you get out of that place so that you can be content? One thing, everybody say thankfulness. Thank God. When you can come into the place to thank God, you can come into the place of contentment. Let's say thankfulness, establish contentment that's based on hope. So on hope, based on hope, you can come into this life of contentment where life is not like a holiday. But the whole thing of holidays, and I come into a place of rest. I'm coming to a place of rest where I'm satisfied. I can enjoy life. It's good. I like my life with Christ and the people around me. That's easy to say. But we're going to live it in Jesus' name. Amen. God's going to help us with that. Yeah, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord for Grant and Tina and the kids. Oh, man. Hey, that was such a blessing. Hey, we are so glad they are here. Hey, man, can I mean, it's really word for me. But it's also good, no? Praise the Lord. Hey, hey, hey. Now, where am I now? <laughs> holiday. <laughs> holiday, holiday. Hope in your holiday. My brother, my sister, sometimes hope 
is too much just a serious thing of we are serious. I hope this will change. I hope we will get the breakthrough. I hope. And so hope is a serious thing. No. It's especially in the time. Especially in the time. When I'm finished with the race. And it's a time to chill. In your chill time. Hope must be there. In your chill time. It's not when the rubbish temptations and the negativity can come to the fore. And the depression and all those other stuff. And you evaluate yourself. You give yourself 2 out of 10. And you do this. And the enemy starts to play around with you. Oh, it cannot be. But if you understand the contentment, how to enjoy your life, enjoy your God, enjoy the people around you, in spite of whatever. Yeah, that's great gain. Great gain. Contentment with godliness is great gain, the word says. You have such a profit. There's such a profit in you. There's such a prosperity in your life. When you know how to be content. You prosper. You have prosperity in your life. When you know how to be content. That's what the word of God says. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Okay. I'm all around. We're all right. Ordinary life. We're talking about the ordinary life tonight actually. Hope in your ordinary life. That when you want... When you're on holiday, when you're on this, when you're in a, in, a, in a challenge, you can just enjoy life. Ecclesiastes 12, verse 13. When it says at the end of the day, remember we spoke about this 3,000 times already, that this man says everything is vain. Vanity, vanity, vanity. Alles te vergeefs. It's all, what's the other word? Not vanity, but... Meaningless, donkey. It's all meaningless. Everything is meaningless. Now what type of contentment is that? What type of hope is there when you say everything is meaningless? Everything is meaningless. Everything is meaningless. But at the end of the day, this man with this major lot of wisdom, major lot of women, major lot of uh, wealth where the other people come and look, uh, Queen of Sheba come and look oh, at all the wealth of this man. Everything, everything, everything a man could... One four in the flesh out there. And at the end of the day, when he says everything is vanity, he brings something very simplistic just out. And he says, I've seen nothing better than somebody enjoying his life, the fruit of his labor, and enjoying it, even with friends. Are you with me? I must not go in this now, but and then right at the end of this book, he says, there's only one thing. The duty of man, what is expected of you as a human being, what is expected of you as a child of God is fear God and keep his commandments. Let's say, fear God, keep his commandments. What does that mean? I respect my God, I will do as he says. Let's say, God, I will respect you. And I will do what you ask me. That is the duty of man. After his, this man's whole life with everything that he got. The desires of his heart. Everything. All the desires was given to him. And many times just out of a place of wisdom even. He comes and he gives this simplistic principle. <sighs> tomorrow my brother. Just decide tomorrow. I will respect God and I will do as he tells me. I will respect him. So you don't, like we said last week, it's not first of all to have the faith to do it. First, have the respect to do it. I must have the faith to believe I'm excellent. I must have faith to believe I'm excellent and I'm valuable. No. You must have respect for God and then you take it. I respect his opinion. And his opinion is, I'm valuable, I'm excellent. And if I respect his opinion, I choose to to take it. I'm valuable. I'm excellent. Let's say I'm valuable. I'm excellent. I believe that because I respect my God. And I respect his opinion. Don't have, go and have the arrogance to, to have a fight with God about his opinion about you. 
Amen. We leave that one side. And from that place of respect, I find hope. When you respect your God, you find hope. You find hope. So when you go into situations, just first decide, who do I respect the most here? And you won't believe it. For the one that you respect, you will make time to hear what he has to say. If I only respect the opinion of JP, for the rest, what, wara, 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 wara. I will try my best to find it what he is saying. I will try to shh all the rest so that I can hear what he is saying because I respect his opinion. Doesn't mean I believe at this stage perfectly everything that he says and I understand what he is saying and why he is saying it and what is his heart behind what he is saying. But if I say I start with I respect his opinion above everything, then why will you wait on the Lord? Because you respect him. And you respect his opinion. And from that place of respect, I have hope. I have hope. I have hope. If you have no hope in God, why are you praying? Why are you speaking to him? But from a place of hope, from a place of hope, you pray. God, I come to you. Why? Because your hope is in God. Now, when the word says, wait on the Lord, it has to do with hope. My hope is in God, that's why I wait on him. Now, interesting, you can write it down, Isaiah 40, verse 31. It says, those who wait on the Lord, they will renew their strength. Those who wait on the Lord. Now, you find other translations. You know what they translate? Wait with those who hope. In the Lord. In the waiting, there's hope. I will not move. I will wait for JP to speak because my hope is in what he says. My hope is in his opinion. I, I go with what he says. I respect him and my hope is in what he says. That's why I will wait for him to speak. When you learn how to wait upon God, that's when you learn how to hope in him. So hope and wait goes like two sides of the court, coin. Are you with me? You hope you will get this appointment with this doctor because you just know this man, he, he, he knows what he's doing. And so you will wait for that appointment for another three days. Because you know this man, he knows exactly what he's doing. That's the best one you can find in the whole region. And if they tell you, you just have to wait three days. Will you be so stupid not to wait if it's possible to wait? No, you will wait. I challenge you, I challenge you to decide. Who is your hope? And will you wait for him? That means will you hope in him? Those who hope in the Lord, they will renew their strength. Now, that is actually prayer life. Hope in your prayer life. That's those who wait on the Lord. Hope in your prayer life is waiting on the Lord. Prayer life is you position yourself with God. Prayer life is when you pray in tongues, you tell your mind to shut up. Remember 1 Corinthians 14. Hey? When your spirit pray, your mind is unfruitful. When you pray in tongues, your spirit prays and your mind is unfruitful. You tell, you bypass your mind. And if you cannot learn how to bypass your mind, your soul. Hello. Remember soul standing here? If spirit cannot learn how to bypass the soul, there will be so many times conflict between soul and spirit. Soul and spirit. Spirit and soul. This conflict. But you know, in prayer, you come into a place of rest. Where you just totally bypass soul. How? By praying in tongues. Praying in tongues can be so amazing, 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 amazing. If you don't have a breakthrough in that, trust God for that. Let the leader or somebody pray with you. So that you can have the breakthrough. Are you really with me? Really are you with me? God will help you. God will help me. But we need to get into that place. Of understanding how to be waiting on God. But especially 
from your spirit. Now, soul must wait. Soul, the emotions, the will, the, the personality, all these stuff is, must wait because spirit is focusing on God and the Holy Spirit. Yeah, God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit. Are you with me? Yeah, let's not hear. So please, my brother, let's go with that. Let's go with that. Those who wait on the Lord, even when you will have your prayer time, you can teach yourself not to have hope and go on the feeling of hope. And I pray till I have a feeling of hope. When you pray, you're speaking to hope. When you're waiting on God, you're waiting on hope. Your hope in the Lord or you hope for the Lord. Like people wait on the Lord, they wait in the Lord. There's, it's both. The word talks about both. You wait in the Lord and you wait for the Lord. So you wait in hope and you wait for hope. Hello? You wait in hope because you are in Christ. They say, I wait in hope. What does that mean? You already have hope. In your waiting, you already have hope. And because you have hope, and you find yourself in hope, that's why you are waiting, that sounds freaky, for hope. <laughs> that's why you're waiting for God to come and move. For God to do. For God to give the breakthrough. For God to split the water. For God to bring the quails and the manna. For God to bring the water from the rock. For God to deal with the giants. For God to do that. But if it's not happening, hope is not gone. Because you are in hope. And hope is in you. But you're also waiting for hope to manifest himself in the situation. But you are not shaken if that what you hope for didn't happen. Ah, uh, you'll admit me. Ah, oh, please, man. If you can take this, you can spare yourself maybe a lot of turmoil and from that place once again you are content you can be happy those who hope those who wait those who expect those who look for hello when you wait when you expect the other translations when you look for it's because you believe it is there it is there you cannot wait for something that you don't believe is not going to come i'm waiting I'm waiting for the rain. Why will you wait for the rain? Because you believe, you believe, you believe the rain is coming. Are you with me? So you have faith. You have the faith that hope will come. So waiting has to do with hope, but it also has to do with the fact of, I really believe this will come. I really believe this will happen. It says there, those who hope in the Lord and those who hope for the Lord, they will mount up, this is now in prayer, mount up and soar with wings as eagles. Everybody say, mount up. Mount up. Everybody say, soar. They say, soar as eagles. Soar. Okay, so what is this about? I will, we will soar as eagles. As we wait on the Lord, we will understand spirit dynamics. Hello. When I wait on the Lord, when I hope in God, I will understand spirit dynamics. I will soar like an eagle. I will soar like an eagle. What is, I'm understanding the heavenlies. I'm understanding the movement of the wind in the heavenlies. I'm understanding the movement of the spirit in the heavenlies. I'm understanding the movement of the demonic sphere in the heavenlies. I can understand when the demonic presence is coming in. Or when it's demonic, what is coming to me, even though it looks perfect. But it's demonic. When you wait on the Lord, when you understand how to be with God, and you find your hope in Christ, God will open that dimension for you. Eagle. It's just in the eagle. It's just there. That thing of, that dynamic is built into that eagle, that at the end of the day, a little bit with the wings, but just like that, and then you will understand the wind, doesn't matter what storm comes, doesn't matter what comes his way. He, there's a, a dynamic in the heavenlies that you just can understand. 
It's destined for you. You have that capacity. It's in you to understand the spirit dynamics, the dynamics in the heavenlies. God created you in such a way that you will be able to understand it. But will you have the respect to wait on him? Will you have the respect to hope on him and hope in him and wait for him? Amen. Because if that, if that is true, then what? If you are like the eagle, that you can soar like an eagle, then what will you do? You will catch the snake and you will catch the fish. No. Interesting. Then he says, then you will run and not grow weary. Is that now the eagle that will run? No, 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 no. The eagle is the spirit dynamics. When you understand the spirit dynamics, you will run and not grow weary. You will walk and you will not faint. So my running... I will not grow weary. By walking, I will not faint. I will not faint. Why? Because the spirit dynamics over my life, I understand what's happening in the spirit. Because I'm coming from a place of hope. Because in hope, like the eagle, I can sit with Christ in heavenly places. There. Hi, Mr. Eagle. I'm there. But from that place, I will not get frustrated. I will not just get irritated. I will come to know that prayer life is excellent. Prayer life can be excellent. And from that place, when I understand spirit dynamics, when I know how to soar, so that practically I can walk and I can run. Not I can fly. <laughs> I can fly in the spirit. And if I can soar in the spirit, and I'm sensitive in the spirit, and I can work with the spirit, then I will walk. I will run, I will not grow weary, I will not faint. Oh. Hope in your prayer life. Hope in your prayer life. May God open this up for you. And we can stop now here and we can just do some ring a ring -a roses for the rest of the camp. And great, we've accomplished what I believe we must do. If we can take this, if you can take this and give it to those around you. But first of all, once again, remember what we're saying now. You must speak it to your soul. You know, when you hear a teaching, when I listen to a teaching, when you hear a teaching, when we read the word, your spirit is taking it. Your memory, your soul will not necessarily remember it. But get back into it. Say, so Holy Spirit, what are you saying to me further? What are you saying to me further? If God starts a conversation, does it mean God tonight he started to speak to you? And when we walk out here, God is finished speaking to you. Or maybe tonight in a session, when we are, we are in church, like coming together, or when we have a teaching, or tonight have a teaching, maybe God just opened a conversation with you. Maybe this was just the introduction. And everybody, every time God would introduce himself in a conversation, or God starts a conversation with you, you turn around and you walk off. That's wonderful. But, but during the conversation, you, you just walk off. And we can get so used to, I've heard something nice, and if I feel I've heard something nice that I can chew on or that I can apply, then I decide the conversation is over. And so many times we can miss such a lot. Of that waiting on God for spirit dynamics so that I don't have a hell of a battle with the storm. But like we said last week, that I can speak to the storm, not fight the storm. With the storm coming into my boat, and on my boat to go and sink. And I must get the storm out of my boat, or the water out of my boat. But instead of in the name of Jesus Christ, speak to your storm. But the same here. If I understand spirit dynamics, I can wait on God. If I can wait on God, you will run, not grow weary. Walk, you will not faint. Let's say, I'm going to run, not grow weary. I'm going to walk, I will not faint. Because I will understand spirit dynamics. How will you get there? Just simply wait on him. Make it simple. Wait on him. Wait with the word. Don't get frustrated when you don't understand the word. It's okay. 
That eagle does not understand why he's waiting. I'm waiting now this, and I'm still waiting today, so that that day when that type of storm is there, and I know how to go there, that that will happen. That's what too many times in the past we wanted to know. And if I know the reason for waiting, then I will wait. But that eagle does not understand the reason for waiting. But it's just in him. He was made in such a way. You were made in such a way. Because God wants your attention. He desires your attention. He's jealous for your love. So the waiting is his desire. His desire is for you to hope on him. To hope in him. Hello. It's not first of all that the circumstances changed. But it's the fact that he enjoys not putting you through a suffering. No. He's enjoy, enjoying it when you put your hope and your trust in him. Because in that place, when you really do that, he will bring a contentment. He will bring a fulfillment. He will bring a settling. He will bring that peace. He will enter, you will enter the rest. Is it not that Jesus said, they will not enter my rest. There's a my rest, God's rest that you can enter into. And there's a enjoy the joy, enter the joy that your master enjoys. So there's a joy that God enjoys that you can enter into. There's a rest that you can enter into that is only from him. But I cannot enter his rest. I cannot enter into my master's joy if I don't understand how to wait on him. How to hope in him. God's going to help you. God's going to help me. We're going to do this. In Jesus name. We're supposed to finish. Hey. Who said y'all? Yeah? <laughs> you had a, have a lot of hope. Hey. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, we will cut the rest now. And we will. Um, <clears throat> Can somebody, Eugene, remove Jolene, please? Okay. <laughs> okay. Hope in your conversations. Uh, all I'm going to say there, all I just want to say this one thing, please. Hope in your conversations. Tomorrow there will be prophetic words, but in a very different way. So um, we're going to enjoy it. We're going to enjoy it. Um, it's going to be good. And uh, we're going to trust the Lord for something different in the prophetic ministry in the second session after the morning prayer groups and with a, with a brunch after that. Okay, but I just want to, uh, Jeremiah 29, 11, as you all know that. I know, I know, I know. God says, I know. God says, Jandre, God says, I'm not confused. I know. I know. I'm determined. I'm 100% aware of what I'm doing. That is, I know. God says, I'm 100% aware of what I'm doing in your life. And I'm 100% aware of the thoughts that I have for you. Of the plans that I have for you. And it's not to harm you. God says, don't question my motive. God says, it's not to harm you. God says, don't question my motive with you, even if you don't understand your circumstances and what's happening around you. Don't question. But I'm here to give you a hope and a future. The thoughts that I have for you, the plans that I have for you, is to give you a hope and a future. Now the two, actually, is the same word. When somebody says, I have no future, what does it mean? It means I have no hope. So in this context, God says, hope and future, that's, that's going together. When you have hope, then there's a future. You have hope because there is a future. Hello? If you know Christ is coming again, speak that hope to one another and say Maranatha. Encourage one another with the words Maranatha. What does that mean? God is coming soon. God is coming soon. So encourage one another with that. Encourage one another by reminding your, your brother about his future. Remind your brother about 
his future. Remind yourself about your future that God has an excellent plan for your life. It's not just a simple thing to say to everybody. It's not a thing to be believed by everybody. There's only a few that believes it. But in the future, it's also going to change in Jesus' name. When you look at Russia, when you look at, yes, there's a lot of prophets saying, no, the Third World War. Um, and, you know, stuff can happen. Just, it's just like four decisions from two people, maybe. From two major personalities. And you can see millions. Gone. Boom. Gone. What is life? What is man that God is mindful of him? Hello. What is man? He's but grass. Here and the next moment he's gone. But the quality that you live now has to do with now you live eternity. You live internal life. That I give you a hope and a future. And that future has to do with eternity. The word says, I have set eternity in their hearts. God has set eternity in your hearts when he gave you a future. Because your future has eternal value. That is the hope in you. It has eternal value. Your future is eternal. Can we go with that? So please, please, I want I must leave that. Hope is a stability in your expectation. I, you can write that down if you want to. Uh, we're not going to get out of all this. Hope is a stability in your expectation. And future is a life with eternal value. Future is a life with eternal value. That is your future. What future do you have? Oh, I have a life with eternal value. I'm already in my future. Tell me your future. I have a life. I have it. I have my future. I have a life with eternal value. That's my future. Is it limit me? Hope. I have a stability. Stability in my expectation. Not first expectation for goodies to change. But there's a stability. Now if the word says, we must end up with that one. But we started late, hey? We only started at 8 o'clock. What time did we start? Reika ki waarheid of nie? The scripture, sorry. I know the plans that I have for you. Plans to prosper you. Oh, God just wants to give you the prosperity. No, not prosperity teaching. Prosper you, donkey, broers, the after, plans to prosper you, that you will blossom, that you will flourish, that two talents will become four, that five will become ten, that you will flourish. God wants you to prosper. God wants you to prosper. Are you with me? As you lament me. So God, when He will speak to you, it's always in His mind. You're going to prosper. You have a future. You have a hope. You will prosper, you have a future, you have a hope. I know the plans. And everything in that context is, you have a future, you will prosper, and I have for you a hope. That's always there. It's always there. That's always there. God wants you to prosper. He has a future, and he has a hope for you. Now in this prosper, you, you know there's a scripture that says, and everything that that man does prospers. What that man with his hand touches, it prospers. It prospers. Now, first of all, that's the hand of God. But how will your hand become like his hand? Well, what his hand touches, it prospers. Now there's a promise of a man that can live in such a way that whatever he touches, prospers. And we're in love with that Psalm 1. Psalm 1. We are talking about hope in your conversations. Hope in your conversations. My brother, you can sit with somebody and when you're finished with that person, you are miserable times ten. Hello. You can sit with somebody and he can give you the facts of how this person did me wrong and how that person did that and how that person did that and this person is skinnering 
uh, uh, about that. What's going to gossiping? This guy is gossiping about this, and that guy, that guy is speaking behind your back, and you walk away some one miserable person. Blessed is the man that is very, 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 very happy. You're talking about happy, hey? Very happy is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the the wicked or the ungodly. You will walk in the counsel of somebody in, because of conversations with someone that will in, it will in, always influence your walk. Your conversations will influence your walk. You walk according to your conversations. You and the devil have excellent conversations. You will walk according to, to that negativity or according to that temptations. You will walk according to that. You and God have conversations. You will walk according to that. Those who does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, but in the counsel of the counselor, called the Holy Spirit. As the word says, the Holy Spirit is the counselor. So hope in your conversations. When you and Holy Spirit, the counselor, is in conversation, Blessed are you, happy are you in your walk when your counselor is the Holy Spirit. Your conversations, first of all, you are sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is saying. And sometimes it's not commandments given. It's not commands. It's not rebuking. It's just conversation. Are you with me? God will betake you net met jou gesels. If you can learn how just to have also a conversation with God, a normal conversation, without some very serious stuff, that can be so awesome. Blessed are you, happy are you. If you walk in the counsel of the counselor, not the counsel of the ungodly. Secondly, we are talking about, and does not stand in the way of the sinner, but stand in the way that is called Jesus Christ. Council of Holy Spirit, stand in the way called Jesus Christ. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, God says. Amen. So I'm your strategy. Stand in my strategy. When you stand in Christ as your strategy, you are strategic. You don't have a strategy. You are strategic. Let's say I'm strategic. I'm strategic. Okay? Because you are standing in the way called Jesus Christ. You are standing as a strategic man, a strategic woman, so that when you will act, when you will do, when you will speak, it will be strategic. Amen? Let that be so. And let that type of fulfillment, because there's hope in your conversations. There's hope there where you go. Na? Is it var? Let it be so. Not in the way of sinners. Sinners, sin is the word that means you miss the mark. You miss it. You miss it. You miss, you, miss, you miss what God has for you. You don't even know that you're missing it. And so many stuff, you don't even know what you're missing. But God wants to give you the breakthrough. It's going to happen. And, and thirdly, he does not sit in the seat of mockers, scoffers. Scoffers and mockers. Ne? Hello. Where are you supposed to sit? Seated with Christ in heavenly places. So where are you seated? With Christ in heavenly places. And from there you rule and reign, the word says. So from that place, you with Christ speak with the authority between you two. Between you and Christ, there's authority. There's conversation because you rule with him. That means you speak to one another and in the conversation there's authority. You speak about your situation of tomorrow, but there's authority in the conversation. And what's going to come out of that conversation with authority is you're going to walk with that authority into tomorrow's situation. Are you with me? No, uh, blessed is the guy that, doesn't, that does that and that, that and that, that. Now the word says, blessed is the guy that does not do it in that way, not in that way, not in that way. Why? But. It's not, he just chooses the opposite. No. But he delights in the law and he meditates on God's word day and night. We are talking about the hope in your 
prayer life. We are talking about waiting. Waiting. When you meditate, it has to do with waiting. When you meditate on something, it's because you know there's a depth in it. There's something more in this. There's something more in this. When you have an expectation of there's something more, you, don't, you won't believe it. You just find the energy, you find the strength, you find the focus, you find the attention. You can give your attention, you can give your focus. Because you know there's something more that God has for you. There's something more that God has for you. I pray that you will walk into that place. And that you will know there's something more that God has for you. When God opens up the word, when you hear the word, when you read the word, when somebody prays the word, you, you are immediately aware that there's always something more for you. There's always something more that God has for you. Tell your neighbor there's always something more. No, I want us to pray. I want us to pray uh, in groups of four, four, three, three, or five, five. Can we just quickly, that we end off with that? Uh, you can uh, turn around and pray with somebody that you've never met before. Uh, they are type of Christians. I can just tell you that. So it's supposed not to be a very hard story. Can you just turn around, maybe, and? Um, Okay, it was the also groupies, what all? Okay, if everybody's ready. Okay. Right, are you ready? I'm going to pray and then you... I want you guys, each one, just to agree with that person. Just... Just to agree with that person. To say, God, I, I just declare, I put my hope in you. And for things that went wrong, I just come back to you. Where things, as you feel that, whatever is in your heart. To say, things that went wrong with my soul, I come back to you. And I choose to believe the hope that you've placed in me. Hello? The hope that you've placed in me. Who's that? Jesus Christ. I will believe him. I will believe him. Let's see my spirit. Help me to live from my spirit. Help me to get my soul in line. Whatever spoke to you, even if it's just two sentences, no problem. I just want you to seal it with the words from our mouth. Just seal what you feel you need to seal for your, for your life. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you guide each one now, that they will utter the words that is from your heart for them. Right now, in the name of Jesus. That it will be sealed in the spirit so they will can live it on earth. I pray that there will be a releasing of spirit dynamics to soar as eagles so that they can run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. Run and not grow weary, walk and not faint. Because they will understand as we go from this place, these men and women will start to understand spirit dynamics as you've opened up this conversation tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Over to you.